Robin Dundee. She is 14 three hands high, nine years old, and weighs 900 pounds. She has been the idol of the harness sport in Australia and New Zealand for six years. Ever since her sensational New Zealand Oaks win, after running almost off the track. Richly bred, she is by Hal Triax, out of a Dylan Hall mare, and was foaled on the Southland New Zealand property of her owner, Mr Jack Hewitt. With her great heart and will to win, together with a paralysing burst of speed, she has scored an impressive string of victories. Sometimes underestimated because of her size, she has nevertheless beaten all the champions in her time. Notable among her victories are wins over Cardigan Bay, Lordship and Falsehood, an Auckland Cup and an Inter-Dominion Dead Heat. She has won close to $160,000 in Australia and New Zealand and still holds a world record for a mare over a mile and five furlongs. Her arrival in Perth for the 1967 Inter-Dominion Championships, together with other New Zealand and Eastern States horses, created quite a stir. At five o'clock in the morning, as the sun is rising, she has already logged over 16,000 air miles, as well as several thousand by land and sea. When it comes to travelling, she is sensible and easy to handle. Aircraft or horse float, they're all the same to her. And after all, worrying about transport is not her job. Once she is installed at the Cannington stables of local trainer Dan Egan, the normal routine is quickly established. One of her assets is her ability to settle down wherever she is and immediately assume the leading role in the stable. A role she plays with true star temperament, making an appearance when it suits her. Or perhaps to the enticement of a carrot, offered here by Mrs Hewitt, who has always considered her part of the family. But now to more serious business. During racing season, her days begin alike. In the early morning, the strapper leads her out to make ready for the training track. And it's not very long before her veteran trainer is on the scene. 74 years old, Jack Walsh has spent 60 years of his life amongst horses, beginning as a jockey. Since then, this slightly built, wiry man has owned, trained, ridden and driven hundreds of horses and has the wealth of experience and knowledge to take a champion through the hard racing season. Although he appears quite unconcerned, there is nothing casual in the way he carefully checks the gear, making sure every strap is buckled to exactly the right length. The relationship between these two is remarkable. He tolerates her displays of temperament, and she knows just how far she can go with him. Once she is harnessed, however, it's all business, and there's no question about who is boss. There could be a champion left behind in the stalls, but right now these horses seem to know Robin Dundee is special as they watch her leave for the track. On the way she visits the farrier to have a new plate fitted. Since her feet are virtually her fortune, it is vital that her shoes fit perfectly. On arrival at the track, Jack Walsh may change into colours for cameras, although this is not normal practice. Impatient to get on with the job, she can occasionally prove quite a handful, although one of her qualities is her continual keenness to work. She always works free-legged, and her training varies through slow jogging, a gallop to relax the muscles, and some smart three-quarter pace work. For a small horse, she has great overreach or length of stride. And this, coupled with a perfect race temperament, has enabled her to topple the giants. At home or away, there are always admirers at the track. 
Here, the owner of Australia's trotting mare, Grammel, has a few words with Jack Walsh. Next morning, it's Irving Rudd, publicity director of Yonkers Raceway, who's out bright and early to have a look at the little lady. Behind that thoughtful expression, he may be picturing her on the world-famous Yonkers track. Leaving the track under the watchful eyes of the Hewitts, she doesn't waste any time heading back to the stable, where the man from Yonkers has already arrived to talk with her trainer. she finds a regular pattern of activity. First of all, there's nothing like a good roll in the sand. Hmm, in fact, that was so good, I think I'll have another one. straight from the tap. Thank you. And since it's a little cool this morning, would you mind keeping that water off my back? Ever attentive and careful of her diet, Jack Walsh appears with some special hay, selected for flavour by Robin Dundee herself. Outside the stall, plans for her future are under serious discussion. Did I hear the word America? Finally comes the first of the big nights. The opening of the 1967 Inter Dominions at Gloucester Park in Perth, probably Australia's glamour track. The crowds gather long before the first race, and the carnival atmosphere prevails in the warm summer evening. State Government Premier Brand officially opens the series and welcomes the thousands of visitors who have come from interstate and overseas. The stars of the show are the horses. And under the lights they shine like satin as they parade before each race. The driver's silks are gay splashes of colour and the silver wheels of the spiners flash back the light. The nine championship heats were run over three nights and in the second heat, after an accident had marred the race, South Australian Bon Adios flew home from Western Australians Binaro and Paula Nelson. Robin Dundee, number 12 in the white bridle, started off 36 yards behind in the third heat. She had to work her passage, but got through in the straight with a great run, the second and fastest time behind Victorian mayor Golden View with Blue Pennant third. Under Australian trotting rules, drivers of the first five horses weigh in immediately after each race. This allows any one of these five to lodge a protest at this time. The next night of the carnival saw the second big win by West Australian Bin Shaw in Heat 5, beating Tasmanian Halwes and New Zealander Waitaki Hanover. Trained and driven by Phil Coulson, Bin Shaw really found winning form at the right time. In heat six on the same night, Robin Dundee scored a most impressive victory. Again, coming from near last with that long, far finish to run down New South Wales' favourite tongue twister right on the line. In 
innovation by the Western Australian Trotting Association was the presentation of a rug and sash to the winner of each heat, a move that was much appreciated by owners. The third night of the championships saw visiting horses feeling the effects of a week of near century heat and a hard track, and honours went mainly to Western Australians. The eighth heat was won in good style by local mayor Colourglow from Tongue Twister and Dale's Gift. Heat nine marked Binshaw's only defeat when he ran second to Golden View with Satana's third. Robin Dundee ran seventh, but still paced fastest time. Grand final night saw a record crowd of 32,000 at Gloucester Park and vantage points were taken long before the candidates came out on the track. Among the tense and hopeful were Robin Dundee's owners, outwardly calm as they studied the field, but with eyes for only one as the horses paraded. And finally, the race was underway. A length and a half further back then the blue pennant around Tongue Twister. A length and a half further afield White Tacky Hanover and last of all is Robin Dundee but tacking on. Going out of the straight. There's not a great deal of pace on Duckett is slowing this field down as they go onto the circle. That will bring them into the straight where they'll have over two laps to go and the leader is Golden View putting them down nicely. About a length and a quarter clear to Kanita. A length away Binshaw over on the inside. Lovely uh, beautiful e position there but gets out as they went down the back straight. It's Golden View about a length clear off Kanita up on the outside is Bonadios Binshaw still locked in they're followed by Colour Glow Southern Song Blue Pennant and there's Robin Dundee the driver said let's go and the little lady sets all out after them she's going three and four wide but she's going around them at the rate of knots when the pace was slow there's a bad spill here on the straight a tongue twist is out of it, so is Blue Pennant and Colour Glow on the three horses will have to be moved in a hurry and around the turn and Ben Shaw has got it run. There's $30,000 in sight and in the run home, the Western Australian people are going berserk when Ben Shaw went to the line to win it very easily. Oh, it's won by about 12 yards. A great finish and all honours to Ben Shaw. But even in defeat, the mayor was not disgraced having again run fastest time. As the drivers weigh in, Governor Sir Douglas Kendrew speaks to Robin Dundee's driver, New Zealander Robert Cameron. Out on the track, Lady Kendrew decorates Bin Shaw, while officials make ready for the formal presentations. It is an historical occasion for Western Australia as this is the first time a locally bred horse has won the Inter-Dominions here. Trophies are presented to the owners and to trainer driver Coulson. And on a note of high excitement, another Inter-Dominion series comes to a close. And what of our lady champion? Well, in the words of her trainer, you can't win them all. And at the moment, a well-earned dinner is of prime importance. And judging by the admiring crowd around the stall, she hasn't lost any friends. Yonkers Raceway Chief, Martin Tannenbaum, has dropped in to say hello. And he doesn't seem too concerned about her defeat. He is well aware that she too can become the idol of the American crowds, just as her mighty predecessors, Caduceus and Cardigan Bay have done. And it looks as though she is in total agreement. Or could it be the honey Jack Walsh mixed with her child? Owner Jack Hewitt would probably tell you she's saying, just watch me next time. And as events turned out, he could be right. On a bright sunny morning, Robin Dundee left Perth for Melbourne and Sydney where in successive weeks she recorded two sensational wins. One over a mile in one minute 59 seconds. Probably a world record for a mare. In the world of harness racing, the name of Robin Dundee must rank with the greatest, for she is truly a champion lady. She will be missed by followers of the harness sport in Australia and New Zealand, who always love a champion. And this grand little mare has earned that title.